Hi everybody, this is author Haley Barrett here for Authors Everywhere. I'd like to thank uh, Susan Tan for organizing this. You can learn more about it um, on her website, which is susantanbooks.com, uh, but I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, I'm here to read my picture book, What Miss Mitchell Saw, for you today. I'd also like to note that my publisher, Simon & Schuster Beach Lane, has very sweetly agreed to let me read this book um, in its entirety to you today, so I'm very grateful for that. So I will do that. I'm going to read the book, and then I'm going to um, offer to you a writing prompt, or I don't know, maybe it's more of a thinking prompt, um, just for, for your enjoyment um, after you read the book and, you know, for something further to think about. So um, without further ado, I'm, I'm going to read the book now. It was illustrated by the brilliant Diana Sudika. Um, here's the cover. I hope you get a chance to see it in person sometime. It's a video can't really do it justice. The cover is just a tiny bit sparkly and it's super pretty. Thank you, Diana, for doing such an amazing job. So this is What Miss Mitchell Saw by Haley Barrett. That's me and Diana Sudika. On the first day of August, in a house tucked away on the fog-wrapped island of Nantucket, a baby girl was born. Like all babies, this baby was given a name. Her parents whispered it to her like a gentle breeze, Mariah. And there's baby Mariah, wrapped in stars. And you can see how the illustrator wrote her name so that you would know how to pronounce it. It looks like Maria, but it's not pronounced Maria, it's pronounced Mariah. So there's baby Mariah, and you can read Mariah. At first, little Mariah knew only her mother and father, her older brother and sister, and the simple rooms of home. And that's their house on Nantucket, it's on Vestal Street. See little Mariah? But as she grew, Mariah came to know her island. She rambled its gull-dappled dunes. She breathed the fragrance of its wild roses. She listened to the creak of whale ships come to harbor laden with heavy barrels and homesick boys. She knew the ships by name, the Anne, the Independence, the Washington. There's little Mariah with the wild roses and the ocean and the seagull. And those are the whaling ships returned back to Nantucket after their long voyage. Mariah lived near town and often walked the long hill of Main Street down to the crowded wharves and back up toward the grand brick edifice of the Pacific Bank. Along the way, she passed the bustle of many shops. She knew the shopkeepers by name. Mariah in the town. And there are the shopkeepers. Polly Burnell, Betsy Carey, Eliza Riddell. At home, Mariah was trusted with tasks large and small. Schoolwork did not always come easily, but she studied with determination. Mother took note of Mariah's steady ways. When her husband sought someone to assist him, as he observed the night sky, mother said to Mariah, V is the one to help father. There's the kitty cat. So Mariah and her father climbed up, up, up the steep attic stairs to the walkway on their rooftop, high above Nantucket town. Together, they gazed at the night sky that cupped their island like a vast black bowl. There's her father, William Mitchell, Mitchell, leading young Mariah upstairs. I like how the sky has sort of come to meet them. Pay attention to this illustration because we'll see a similar one in a few pages. Father taught Mariah to use a telescope 
He taught her to sweep the sky carefully, bit by bit, as thoroughly as she would sweep a room for mother. He liked to say, Thee must wonder, thee must watch closely, then will thee see and know for thyself. It's a beautiful double spread. It looks to me like her father has tossed young Mariah up and she's become part of the sky, all made of stars. Mariah watched and she wondered. She saw for herself and was captivated. From then on, night after night, Mariah swept the sky. She made fast friends with stars that shone as if punched into the black with a whalebone needle. She knew the stars by name. Spica, Rigel, Polaris. There's Mariah. And you can follow the thread of what she's looking at. See the needle and thread punched into the sky in the names of the stars. She observed planets that glowed as steadily as a whale oil lamp. She knew the planets by name, Mercury, Venus, Saturn. And there she is again. And there are the beautiful planets. She marveled at the celestial phenomena that arched overhead like a whale's sparkling splash. She knew the phenomena by name too, eclipse, aurora borealis, meteor. Do you see in this illustration how it looks like a whale is jumping through the night sky with a huge splash and the names of the celestial phenomena? That might be my favorite illustration. I love that one. Ship captains, home for a while from their whaling, relied on the Mitchells to help them navigate. They brought chronometers, costly timepieces made to withstand ocean voyages. To the little house on Vestal Street. By her father's side, Mariah learned to rate the chronometers. Using a sextant and careful calculation, she determined their accuracy so that sailors at sea might establish their position and when their arduous work was at an end, set a course toward family and Nantucket town. Mariah knew the whalers by name, the Folgers, the Starbucks, her own brother Andrew. So there's Mariah and her dad. This is the chronometer. Each chronometer would belong to a ship captain and would go with them on their voyages, which were long, three to five years, and on the other side of the ocean, deep in the Pacific. And this, an accurate chronometer, meant they could figure out where they were. And if they could figure out where they were, they could figure out how to get home. That's important work for a little girl to be doing. But she was trusted with this work. And there are the whalers, the Folgers, the Starbucks, her own brother Andrew. For a while, Mariah was a teacher, but she intended to advance her own education too. So she became a librarian. She spent her quiet hours at the Athenaeum devoting them to the study of advanced mathematics and celestial navigation. There she is as a teacher. She had a small school for girls for a while. She's teaching them about astronomy. And there she is at the Athenaeum. When she wasn't helping the Athenaeum's patrons find books, she would spend her quiet time teaching herself additional languages French and German, and uh, studying all the texts she could, all the books about astronomy and navigation. And year after year, when day was done and darkness settled over Nantucket, Mariah climbed the steep stairs to her rooftop to sweep the sky. One clear October evening, Mariah saw something new. A nameless patch of light, bright and blurry, not far from familiar Polaris. 
Do you think it will? There she is. Comet. She hurried to tell her father, My Mariah, he exclaimed, Thee must tell the world. There's the illustration I talked about. Similar to the other one. What's different about this one, though? Similar, but not the same. They're both astronomers now. The letter bound for Boston took two long days to leave stormy Nantucket. I think the illustrator had a blast drawing this storm. Here's little Nantucket. This is Cape Cod and the state of Massachusetts. The beautiful Atlantic Ocean with the storm and whales. It's beautiful. Half a world away, other stargazers scoured the skies. The king of Denmark had pledged a gold medal to any astronomer who discovered a new comet by telescope. Finding one of these hurtling ch chunks of ice and gas was a rare feat, and many hoped to win gold and glory. There's the king. This is Frederick VI, who first had the idea to distribute gold medals to astronomers who discovered new telescopic comets. In a grand observatory in Rome, an astronomer priest spotted the same bright bit of light. He immediately sent word to claim the medal. But Mariah had seen the comet first. The letter from Nantucket, dated two days before the priest's sighting, slowly made its way across the ocean. It passed hand to hand from the astronomers of Harvard College to the astronomers of England to the astronomers of Denmark. Mariah knew the Harvard astronomers by name. They were family friends, William and George Bond. She had not met the others, but knew them by name as well. Sir George Airy, Astronomer Royal of Britain, and Professor Heinrich Schumacher of the Altona Observatory. So there's an illustration of the bonds. And there are the bonds again, and also Sir George Airy and Professor Heinrich Schumacher, all famous astronomers of the day. While these men of science considered the dilemma of who ought to rightfully claim the medal, Mariah swept the sky. While they scrutinized the letter from Nantucket, Mariah swept the sky. While they consulted the astronomer, priest of Rome, Mariah swept the sky. Oops. At long last, they concurred and affirmed Miss Mitchell's discovery. And so the heavy gold medal made its way across the ocean to Boston, to Nantucket, and to Mariah's steady hand. The King of Denmark sent it with his compliments. And there's Mariah. That red object that she's holding is the beautiful red, deep red leather box that the medal lives in even today. The medal was inscribed with the name her parents gave her, the name known to shopkeepers, to sea captains, to sailors, and to school children, Mariah Mitchell. There's an image of the medal with Mariah's name written out the way you're supposed to pronounce it again, Mariah. I've seen the medal, it's very beautiful. And it bore the motto, not in vain do we watch the setting and the rising of the stars. Miss Mitchell saw a comet. The world saw her. And that is the end of what Miss Mitchell saw.
In the back of the book, I hope you get to see it sometime, are two pages of information all about Mariah Mitchell and the remarkable life she led. I just want to take a minute to show you the case cover and how it spreads across the whole book. So um, Mariah Mitchell led a really fascinating life. She um, was the first professor hired for a brand new women's college, Vassar Female Seminary in Poughkeepsie, New York, which is now Vassar College. But um, Matthew Vassar, who founded Vassar Female Seminary, wanted her as the first professor and built a beautiful observatory for her, which you can still see on the campus of Vassar. Um, Mariah taught there for many, many years and educated many famous uh, female astronomers. She herself, of course, never went to college. She was self-educated, um, but she was more than ready to train astronomers. And that's so she went on to a life as a college professor. She traveled the world. She was active in many social movements. She had just a fascinating life. Um, and obviously, I did a lot of research about her as I was writing this book because I wanted it to be as accurate as it possibly could be. Um, one thing that I spent a lot of time, and this is what I mentioned that I would talk to you about, about a, a thinking prompt or a writing prompt, is um, I did not grow up on Nantucket, and I've not been there very much. I've never spent a lot of time there. I've been a couple of times. Um, so it was very important to me to honor Mariah's attachment, her lifelong attachment to the island of Nantucket, by working to create a great sense of place in the book. Um, and I hope I accomplished that. Um, I did a ton of research. I did online research. I read books. I read books by people from Nantucket. I learned about whaling. I learned about astronomy. I learned about everything I could. And then I tried to put those details into the story so that people that were reading it would feel like they knew the island and that they had spent time there with Mariah Mitchell. Um, that's my phone ringing in the book. Oh well, we can ignore it. Anyways, so um, what I'd like you to do for a writing prompt is try to think about a place you've been or a place you'd like to go or a place you'd like to learn more about and think about it. If you need to, if you haven't been there before, research it. And then think about how you could write about that place so that the reader of what you've written will feel like they're there. What does it smell like? Does it smell like wild roses, like Mariah's Island? Does it sound like the creak of whale ships? Does it, um, you know, are there animals? Are there flowers? Are there the ocean breeze? Anything like that that is appropriate to the place that you're thinking about. And then see if you can write something with um, that describes a sense of place that that lets you try to feel like you're really there. And a lot of that has to do with adding those details about the way someplace smell, the way someplace smells or, you know, the sounds you might hear. That's, that's sort of a writing or thinking project that you can do today. The other thing I wanted to say is during this very strange time of seclusion, when the schools are closed and the library's closed and lots of other things are closed, I hope that you will remember Mariah Mitchell and you will remember that you are free to educate yourself. Um, that may be through reading books. Um, if you're lucky enough to have internet access, you could do some research on internet on the internet about a place that you'd like to learn about or some other subject, an animal, anything really, um, obviously with grown-up supervision. And um, Or you could just stare out of a window or lie down someplace and think about um, what you're interested in because that's an important part of educating yourself too is just puzzling stuff through for yourself. So I hope during these days when we're all trying to protect each other and be safe um, at home that you'll think about what you're interested in and allow yourself to watch, to wonder, and become captivated like Mariah Mitchell so you can see for yourself. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and I hope everybody's doing okay out there, and um, I hope to see you again sometime.